Billionaire investor Bill Ackman saying he is betting against the 30-year U.S. Treasury as a hedge against the impact of long-term rates on stocks. He said he believes this is one of the few macro investments that he says offers potential upside gains that's greater than the downside risk. He outlined his argument on Twitter saying if U.S. inflation is 3 percent in the long term instead of 2 percent, and that's what he's effectively betting on, then 30-year Treasury yields could hit 5.5 percent, and he says it could happen soon. Ackman said he's implementing these hedges by purchasing options rather than shorting bonds outright to limit his downside risk. Uh, let's talk about that and so much more in the markets right now. Joining us is Matt Cabrera. He's the head of Cross Asset Strategies and a senior portfolio manager at Nomura Private Capital. Good morning to you. Uh, uh, Good lots morning. of places we could go this morning, Matt. Uh, I'm so curious about what you think of both about the Fitch downgrade, uh, maybe some of the reactions we just heard, Bill Ackman, yeah. uh, where equities are going. But let's start with the Fitch downgrade. If, if you're an investor out there and you're watching all of this, what are you supposed to make of it? Well, I mean, I think I think you and Becky are right. The the analysis that Buffett went through and Jamie Dimon, um, as well as Manchin, you know, they're they're not inconsistent. They're all sort of like, well, we are where we are. Um, we could do things better. And when it's all said and done, though, T bills are going to be the most valuable form of collateral in the financial system. And I think on a relative basis, we are still in the position that we were prior to the downgrade. So I think. You know, it's it's not a good sign. It's a uh, it's a warning shot of sorts, but I don't think it necessarily changes things fundamentally. What do you think of the the Bill Ackman view of the world that actually inflation is persistent at three percent, that two percent is still a pipe dream? These are my words, not his. And yeah. that as a result, there's an interesting hedge to be had. Yeah, I look, I, I I think it's rational. I think that there's a there's a good story behind it. And when when I think about the way you just recapped the way he's implementing the trade, it makes a lot of sense, right? If you pay option premium, you're at risk of losing your premium, but you have the potential for a convex payoff. Um, I think it sounds like a smart way to implement the trade. And look, Janet Yellen herself had has said recently that maybe we should move up the inflation target instead of trying to aim for the lower one. So I think it's consistent with the information that the market's being given. I don't think that it's, um, you know, I don't think it's a bad trade. It's event driven for sure. And we've seen the 30 year go from 4% to almost four and a quarter in just a couple of days. So, so far he's right. D does inflation at 3% mean that the Fed therefore stops and that's why we live at 3%? Or do you think that Jay Powell decides it is my job to hammer this thing down to 2% no matter what? And, and the reason I ask is, obviously, we had some hot jobs numbers. We'll get the, we'll get the yeah. job number tomorrow. How do you think that plays and how much was that? In, how much do you think that impacted, by the way, that jobs number, that ADP jobs number yesterday, impacting the equity markets yesterday in terms of uh, sort of ending this, this little bull spell we've had? Yeah, you know, I think earnings tell you a lot, right? So... When you look at the performance of stocks this earnings season thus far, those that have outperformed have rallied maybe a little bit. The ones that have missed have been punished. What that tells me is that bullishness is priced into the equity market on a number of fronts. I think right now, the reason why we're seeing the most recent pullback is that we have been priced for perfection in an imperfect world. So you see any sign of weakness, any sort of dent in the armor is a is an excuse for repricing risk. And I don't say excuse because they need one. I say excuse because everybody's kind of looking around the room like, are we fully valued? You know, or, and right. you don't have to look too far um, to see inconsistencies either. You look at the, the if you look at the interest rate prediction screen in Fed funds futures, it looks like the market is going to cut. Um, we're going to cut rates going into early next year. And I think what would drive cutting rates into early next year? It wouldn't be because we hit the inflation target, job well done. It's more likely uh, signaling a probability of a recession and, and something in between a, a soft landing and a hard landing. So you know, I think people are sort of taking stock of where things are right now from a price perspective. And I think it's a prudent decision to you know have some dry powder be ready to put some money to work when the market's down in places like private credit look at you know under investing in public equities things like that